In August of 2019, a new expedition led by Catalonian Oceanic has sparked new interest in the wreck of the Titanic, with article after article being produced, stating that the Titanic is in a shocking condition or will only last so many more years. The Titanic has been at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean for over 107 years now. Without a doubt, the famous ocean liner is gradually deteriorating. But this raised a question for me. How bad is the deterioration? Some of the articles mentioned that parts of the wreck has entirely disappeared or collapsed, but goes into very little detail. So what has disappeared, and what has collapsed? After much research on the topic, I made many observations which generally shocked me. I'm the Generic Guide Productions, and today, I'm going to be sharing those observations with you. For this video, I am sourcing my observations from a range of imagery collected from expeditions to the wreck. I have also based my observations on a range of written information I have collected in regards to this topic. In this video, I will only be covering the bow section of the wreck. This is because there is insufficient information to draw a proper conclusion in regards to the stern section of the wreck. But before we can begin, we will first need some context. There are two major factors which are causing the wreck to deteriorate. Microbacteria is a leading factor. It has been estimated that microbacteria are eating roughly 200 pounds worth of iron daily from the wreck, or roughly 3,600 tons by 2010. However, this number is little in comparison to Titanic's total mass of 50,000 tons. However, microbacteria are gradually eating away at the structural integrity of the wreck and have caused sections of the wreck to collapse. As sections of the wreck gradually collapse on one another, the collapse will put additional weight on the deck below it, gradually accelerating the rate of collapse. Estimations vary widely, but experts have predicted that the wreck will last for another 15 to 30 years, with the Titanic being gradually reduced to a brown stain at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Deep sea currents, which have been described as the equivalent of an underwater hurricane, are constantly blowing back and forth against the wreck, constantly blowing through holes and gaps, gradually rearing away at the wreck. Now that context is out of the way, let's get on with the analysis. I will be explaining the changes step by step, from the forward to the aft end of the bow section. The forecastle deck is by far the best preserved section of the Titanic. The only visual changes I'm able to identify is the railings overlooking the forward well deck have fallen over and now lay on their sides. A large piece of debris on the starboard end of the forecastle deck has moved significantly since 1987. With the exception of the ship's mast, the forward well deck appears to be unchanged. The mast had been forced back onto the boat deck during the fall to the sea floor. By 1988, the crow's nest had disappeared, allegedly bumped into by a submersible and has since fallen off to an unknown location. By 1998, the mast has slipped down from the boat deck and now rests on a deck. By 2010, a large downward kink had developed in the center of the mast. The bridge and the wheelhouse was completely destroyed during the fall to the sea floor, and the forward portion of the officers' quarters has also been torn away, and sections of the exterior walls on both sides of the officers' quarters had been curved over to the side. By 2010, most of the debris strewn across the forward end of the boat deck and the superstructure have largely deteriorated, including the curved over sections of the officers' quarters. In the August of 2019 expedition, it has been announced that the starboard side of the officers' quarters has collapsed onto a deck, most likely taking Captain Smith's bathtub with it, which was a favourite of Titanic enthusiasts. Now let's move on to the boat deck. The pieces of debris which had formerly made up the casing for funnel number one have largely deteriorated, increasing the size of the hole left behind by the first funnel. This large gap, which spans the vertical length of the wreck, is the forward expansion joint. This was previously one of two expansion joints in the superstructure of the Titanic. Extending as low as B-Deck, 
the expansion joint allowed Titanic's superstructure to flex during heavy weather. The gap created by the expansion joint has gotten slightly larger in places since 1987. Between the second Marconi wireless room skylight and before the edge of the grand staircase can be seen two large holes parallel to each other, located above the elevator gear. These two holes are most likely the direct result of submersibles landing on the roof of the boathouse while sending robs down into the grand staircase, inadvertently causing permanent damage to the wreck. By 2004, the roof for the Grand Staircase lobby and of the nearby gymnasium has disappeared. This has caused the chasm left behind by the Grand Staircase to grow noticeably larger since 1987. By 2010, the exterior walls for both the Grand Staircase and the gymnasium are in a really bad condition. Large gaps have formed within portions of the exterior walls. The casing for funnel number 2 is also in a really bad condition. It is now littered with many large holes and gaps. By 2010, a large hole has formed on the port side of the boat deck, at the base of the second funnel, and just before the beginning of Titanic's midship. The hole exists in roughly the same location where Wallace Hartley and his band had once played. Several minor holes in the boat deck can also be seen nearby. There are four large square holes in the roof of the boathouse. These holes were previously four large curb-shaped vents, which were responsible for supplying air into the ship's boilers. By 2010, the casing for the vents have largely disappeared. The second and largest vent is the only one that remains somewhat intact, but the majority of its curb dome has disappeared. Moving on to the starboard side of the ship, the aft end of the Adic Promenade has been on a gradual collapse beginning sometime after 1989. The impact the collapse has had on the boat deck above can clearly be seen on the 2004 mosaic of the wreck. By 2010, the collapsed section of the boat deck appears to be sagging further downwards since the 2004 mosaic. Only by the first starboard side mosaic in 2010 can we see the real extent of the collapse. This is by far the most noticeable damage to the wreck, and is also the most concerning. Though extremely difficult to tell, the collapse has appeared to have caused the starboard side of the boathouse to sink downwards, making a noticeable curb in the boat deck at the point of collapse, which has most likely damaged parts of the Grand Staircase A Deck Foyer. The collapse of the A Deck Promenade has now put considerable pressure onto the B Deck below it, potentially accelerating the rate of collapse. The outer walls for the B-Deck Promenade below the point of collapse appears to be in a really bad condition, with sections of the exterior walls now missing, further exposing the interior of B-Deck to the elements. The wreck is gradually collapsing from the aft end forward, at a rate of approximately 30 centimeters a year. The starting point of the incline towards the break of the wreck has grown forward slightly since 1985. Moving on to the port side of the wreck. As you can see, the damage to the port side of the wreck seems to be much less severe. Since 1985, the aft end of the Adic Promenade has collapsed in a curved downward fashion, but not nearly as severely as seen on the port side. The b Deck Promenade appears to be in good condition, but parts of the exterior walls seem to be curved outward slightly. On the boat deck, you can roughly see the outer wall of the Grand Staircase lobby sagging down in its centre. Down along the hole on D Deck, you can see a small square hole. The D Deck First Class Reception Lounge Gangway Doorway was last seen attached to the hole in 1983. By 1998, the doorway had come free of its hinges and had fallen to the sea floor, where it has since been recovered and is now a part of Premier Expedition's travelling Titanic display. On the night of April 14, 1912, Second Officer Lighthaller had ordered for the doorway to be opened, with the intention of loading passengers into the lifeboats via the doorway. But this never happened, and the doorway may have not been sealed properly as a result. The DE Deck Gangway doorway is a topic of much debate among Titanic enthusiasts. The incline towards the end of the stern section has gotten noticeably steeper. 
What was previously a gradual incline in 1985 is now a steep drop-off by 2010. It is interesting how the rate of deterioration and the amount of biological growth seems to be significantly less on the port side of the wreck. Amazingly, the white and black paint scheme of the hull is still visible along the forward end of the wreck even after 100 years. It seems like the deep sea currents are primarily blowing in from the starboard side of the wreck, potentially explaining the increased rate of deterioration on the starboard side, but this is speculation on my part. Though my observations may seem to paint a very negative light for the future of the wreck, it is worth noting that the Titanic is in remarkably good condition considering its age and its circumstances. Many of the articles and predictions I have previously mentioned may be too alarmist. The massive death of the wreck, combined with the cold, oxidless environment, has allowed the Titanic to hold up much better than some younger, more shallower shipwrecks, such as the Lusitania and the Andrea Doria. Whether or not the Titanic as we know it will be gone over the next 30 years is yet to be seen. So far, the wreck seems to be holding up a lot better than previously predicted. Certainly, by the end of my lifetime, the Titanic as we know it could be gone, but if one thing is certainly clear, the legend will forever live on. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. If you notice any observations I may have missed or overlooked, then feel free to comment below and subscribe for further Titanic related content. I have been the Generic Guy Productions, and thank you for watching.